No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Jim Dearman, your host for Good News Today. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, let me tell you what's coming your way on today's program. Of course, our devotional time comes your way initially. That's the first thing on the agenda. And today we go back to the Psalms, to the beautiful 103rd Psalm, which expresses such gratitude and, and praise to God for His bountiful blessings. It's a very popular psalm, and rightfully so, with those who appreciate uh, the qualities of God as they should. So we'll look at the first 10 verses of Psalm 103. So get your Bibles if you don't have them already, and have them open and ready to read along and study along with us. Of course, our devotional time consists of the Scripture reading, then beautiful singing, and that is followed by our brief study. Then it's Leaving a Legacy today with Leroy Deadman, how to tell when you're getting old. How to tell when you're getting old. And uh, you will not want to miss that. And then it's walking and talking through Proverbs with Freddie Clayton. And today he deals with Proverbs 17, verse 28. Proverbs 17, 28. And then in our final segment, we have a GNT Q&A. And the question today, does John 10, 27 through 29, teach the doctrine of once saved, always saved. That's a, kind of a pet passage for some who claim that once you're saved, you're always saved, but we're going to look at it objectively and within the context and answer that question, as always, from the Word of God. And as always, we are glad that you have joined us for another edition of our program, and we hope you're now ready to read along with us from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 10. It is attributed to David, and it begins, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then he continues, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities.
and we are back for the study portion of our devotional time. We have read today Psalm 103, the first 10 verses, and as we mentioned, it is a psalm that is attributed to, to David, and it begins in verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now the idea of bless here is not that we extend blessings to the Lord. That's just the other way around. The Lord extends blessings to us. So the idea here of bless is praise. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And notice it's not praise the Lord, O my lips. It's not just simply offering lip service to the God of heaven. It is the full heart, the mind, the biblical heart, the mind. It is all of one's being with which we praise and serve the Lord. And he, he adds to that, and all that is within me. You can just simply hear the fervency of, uh, of this praise, this expression of praise. Bless the Lord, or praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Here you have really a soul that is has been rescued by God's mercy and is extolling the, the, uh, the blessings that have been bestowed upon him by God. And of course, if David is the author, um, certainly he had many reasons to uh, praise God for, for his blessings uh, toward him. The, the emphasis here is upon uh, forgiveness and also the patience that God has with His people. In fact, uh, you see in verse uh, in verse uh, two, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits." It's not uh, it's not a general summary of benefits. It's it's as though one by one we need to uh, remember His benefits. It reminds us of what James writes in the New Testament in James one. 17, where he says that every good and every perfect gift is cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation, neither shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift. God is good, and God will always do for His people uh, what is best. Now there's a sense in which all men uh, benefit from God, even those who, who are not following God uh, and today, of course, that would mean those who are not Christians, those who are not following God through obedience to the gospel and therefore are in covenant relationship with Christ, they still benefit and should be grateful for those benefits. And those general benefits should lead them to, to desire the special benefits that are available only in Christ, where every spiritual blessing is found, Ephesians 1 and verse 3. What I mean is that they're there are two realms, really, of God's providence, His provision for mankind. There's His general providence and then His special providence. The Bible says that He causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. In other words, God, God blesses all mankind in certain ways through His general providence. It's tragic, of course, that uh, for the most part mankind does not acknowledge that those blessings come from God and do not seek His will, but they nonetheless are the beneficiaries of God's general providence. But then we have, of course, God's special providence, the special benefits and blessings that come to those who are in covenant relationship with Him. We've talked about it before, uh, the blessing of prayer, the privilege of prayer, the privilege of being able to approach the throne of God uh, through Jesus Christ as Christians and to know that He hears and that He will answer in harmony with His will. What a blessing that is. And that takes us to forgiveness, he mentions in verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities. Well, He forgives the iniquities of those who are in praying relationship with Him, that is those who are in covenant relationship with Him. That reminds us of what John uh, writes in 1 John 1, 7 through 9, when he writes, if we uh, walk in the light as He is in the light, that is in the light of His Word, in our case the Gospel, the, the New Testament. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses, that is, keeps on cleansing us from all sin. Then He goes on 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse, again, keep on cleansing us from all unrighteousness. That's the beauty of being in covenant relationship with God and Christ. That is, that we have that forgiveness as we continue to follow His will, but we fall short at times because we're human beings. But the blood of Christ cleanses as we regularly confess our sins and as we keep up our walk with Him. And so the psalmist here is, uh, is praising God for that forgiveness. In verse 3, the latter part, he says, who heals all your diseases. Now, obviously, uh, God doesn't uh, heal every sickness and ultimately we, we die. But there are occasions when we can, can uh, certainly uh, express uh, gratitude for uh, the healing that comes even through His, uh, His natural means that He has provided. God doesn't heal miraculously today, but uh, there are times when healing comes uh, through God's providence, through natural means. What about all the medical uh, technology and the means that we have available to us today? Uh, who gave us those things? Well, they are all blessings from God, are they not? Indeed. And so uh, prayer is a powerful thing, and obviously he, he's not, he doesn't heal all disease at all times, but David here, if David is truly the author of this psalm, had had occasion to be healed from sickness, and he attributed that, uh, that healing to God and God in His uh, providence. There are times when he was near death. Listen to verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction. There were times when uh, David, of course, uh, what about David and Goliath? He could have been and by all means should have been uh, killed by the giant Goliath, but God delivered him from death there. So um, there are times when physical uh, death has been avoided, uh, and uh, that's what David no doubt expresses here. Then he uses the term crowns in uh, verse 4, after uh, the latter part of verse 4, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's an interesting way to put that, isn't it? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. In other words, it's like a garland or a wreath that is, uh, that is awarded to, uh, to the winner of a race. It's a, it's a crown. The, the loving kindness, the tender mercies of God are greater than any physical crown that anyone could ever bestow upon us if we're thinking uh, as we should. And so no wonder the, uh, the psalmist here is, is praising God with all that is within him, with his whole heart. And that's what God wants, praise from the whole heart. He doesn't want a divided heart. I think about Hosea 10 verse 2 where uh, the prophet there said, or God through the prophet said of Israel at that time, their heart is divided. God doesn't want a divided heart. He wants whole-hearted uh, service to us. Then verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles. This could be a reference to the physical food that, that uh, God provides. Reminds me of Acts 14, 17 where on that occasion uh, the writer says, nevertheless he did not leave himself without witness uh, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and uh, gladness, as Paul expresses that uh, sentiment there. And then verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. You know, in this life things may not always work out the way we think they should. And there is injustice, and there is unfairness that God's people are going to have to confront um, throughout their lives at times. Uh, God doesn't settle all of His accounts in this life though. And he ultimately, if we persevere and if we are faithful, then ultimately our reward um, is secure, is secure. Uh, he made known, verse 7, his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. Here the psalmist is reviewing how God dealt with um, the people of Israel, how he has dealt with Israel during that particular period 
of time. Verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. So again, we get back to His mercy and the forgiveness of sins, obviously. And when He mentions slow to anger, that's an emphasis upon the patience of God, and that God is patient. He is long-suffering. But, obviously, God cannot overlook sin, and ultimately, unless we avail ourselves of the means of being forgiven of that sin, then that sin will face us in the judgment and will condemn us forever. Verse 9, He will not always strive with us, nor will He keep His anger forever. That reminds us of the fact that God at times with His people of old dealt with them uh, in a way to punish them. What about the uh, captivity of the northern kingdom in 722 B.C. and then 135 years later uh, the southern kingdom went into Babylonian captivity. But there was a return of the remnant ultimately. And uh, God comforted them and God brought them out of that captivity. And so the psalmist says he will not always strive with us. He will not keep his anger forever. He is a forgiving God. But then finally verse 10 he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. What he's saying there is, he could have destroyed us because of our sin, because of rebellion, and yet he was merciful. God has dealt with us with mercy. He could have destroyed us. And oh, how thankful we ought to be for the greatest gift, the gift of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we can have forgiveness of sins, and the hope of eternal life. Well, that's our devotional time. Time now to find out how you can tell when you're getting old. Here's Leroy Dedman. Do you know how to tell you're getting old? Well, I finally figured it out. All I had to do is to listen to the brethren in their prayers. When I first began preaching, I would hear, Father, we thank you for Brother Dedman and give him a long, useful life in the kingdom. And at some point I began to hear, Father, thank you for Brother Deadman, and give him a ready recollection of the things he has prepared. And recently a brother prayed, Father, thank you for Brother Deadman, and give him a few more years in this service. Well, I have no complaints. But when you think about it, some of God's greatest servants were well beyond middle age when they did some of their best work for the Lord. Moses was 80 years old when he led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. At the age of 85, Joshua said, As yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, both going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain on which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakin were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. It's found in Joshua chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. Now, I, I certainly can't say I'm as strong now as I was 40 years ago, but I'm very thankful for the help I have. Of course, we know God never intended for us to live forever on this earth. And unless we are alive and remain at the second coming of our Lord, we will pass from this life to a better one. The psalmist said in Psalms 90 and verse 10, The days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 9 and verse 27 reminded us of this very basic truth. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Jesus makes it very plain that this world is not our home in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, 
that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. I used to say we're now in the land of the living, but I now understand we are in the land of the dying, and from here we go to the land of the living. Coming up, it is uh, walking and talking through Proverbs with Freddie Clayton after we take a brief information break. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee 37327. That's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. That's goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. Or call us toll free at 1-877-384-7221. That's 1-877-384-7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our viewers is always good news to us. We want you to take advantage of the contact information. We also want you to visit our website at gnttv.org. Let us know how you receive good news today. Right now, it is time to walk and talk through Proverbs with Freddie Clayton. The book of Proverbs is filled with the practical wisdom that will assist us today just as much as when written 3,000 years ago by inspiration of God through Solomon, the third king of Israel. Since heaven's wisdom has been made available to us, we must decide as to whether we will find the direction contained therein. Will you? Will I? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear Proverbs chapter 17 at verse 28. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. Let's think seriously about this proverb. On July the 20th, 2017, O.J. Simpson was granted parole by the State of Nevada Parole Board for his part in an armed robbery after serving nine years of a 30-year sentence. As I listened intently to his words before that board, I was puzzled by his comment. Later that day, one of his former defense attorneys for another incident in Los Angeles, a man by the name of Alan Dershowitz, commented that with what we saw and heard from O.J. during the parole hearing was evidence of the reason why he was not allowed by his lawyers to take the stand in his murder trial in L.A. Could this Jewish lawyer be using the principle of Proverbs chapter 17 at verse 28? I believe so because it certainly fits. When a person openly lies about well-known facts, it demonstrates a failure to heed the sage advice gleaned from this proverb. Boil down to Tennessee Hills vernacular, if you keep your mouth shut, at least nobody will know you're a fool due to the verbal self-exposure. While there may certainly be other ways for people to come to that conclusion, biting your lip goes a long way in keeping the obvious less obvious. This could very well be the reason why it is uncommon for criminals to testify on their own behalf due to obvious self-incrimination. This does not imply that all criminals are intellectually bankrupt, but that how and what one says can be telling, more telling, than a fool desires. Of course, this is a difficult thing for the foolish person to do because they do not consider themselves to be foolish. Therefore, they run their mouths excessively, blathering folly for all to hear, and thus their secret is out. While others who do not know us 
may have doubts about us, by opening our mouths, we may remove all doubt, be it wise or foolish. This is Freddie Clayton, walking and talking through Proverbs. Coming up, it's our final segment, our G&T Q&A after another brief break. segment. It's our G&T Q&A. And here's the question with which we're dealing. Does John 10, 27 through 29 teach the doctrine of once saved, always saved? Well, let's read the verses here. My sheep, Jesus says, hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now, first thing we have to ask is, is this an unconditional promise of eternal life? No. And it is a promise of eternal life uh, that will ultimately find its reality only after this life is over. In fact, Titus 1-2, uh, in hope of eternal life, Paul writes, which God uh, promised before time began. The promise of eternal life. 1 John 2, 25, this is the promise which He has promised us, eternal life. So He's not saying you have eternal life here and it can never, uh, it never uh, can go away or, or, or be defeated. Promise means it has to ultimately reach fruition. But notice the conditions here. My sheep hear My voice and I know them and they follow Me and I give them the eternal life. I give them the promise of eternal life as long as they hear the voice of the shepherd through the written word and as long as they follow me. And so it is a conditional passage, very clearly so. And as we said, eternal life is ours in promise as long as we are in Christ. And what a blessing that is. We've been talking about blessings today from that beautiful psalm in the Old Testament. Thanks for being with us for another edition of Good News Today. Always good news, good news, good news, there is good news today. Good news, good news, the world. Always good news, good news, good news, there is good news today. All around the world, good news, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today.